Today's podcast is brought to you by Jerry Robinson's Market Barometer, a powerful tool for investors who want to avoid the next major market downturn. Learn more at marketbarometer.org. Ah, welcome, friends, to the Tuesday edition of Follow the Money Daily Podcast, a podcast dedicated to your personal, spiritual, and financial freedom right here every single weekday on ftmdaily.com, standing for followthemoneydaily.com. And Follow the Money is really what we do here. I mean, that's what we named our organization. It's very simple. We really try not to pay attention to what the politicians are saying because half the time they open their lips, (laughs) it's just a lie, or uh, they're just trying to get you to do something. But if you really want the truth, what we say is you got to follow the money. you got to really pay attention to what's really going on. And that's what we do both in the markets and with geopolitics. In the markets, the way we follow the money is we pay very close attention to the volume levels that are going on. And I'm going to talk about that on an upcoming show. We're going to talk about how to really follow the money when it comes to the stock market. And uh, we'll be doing a show on that coming up very soon, probably later this week. Uh, As always, I'm joined by my lovely co-host and national director of the Christian Financial Advisor Network, Jennifer Robinson. Hey, Jennifer. Hi, Jerry. And adding to what you just said, not only do we try to get to the truth regarding economics and finance and geopolitics, but we also try to provide you with actionable ideas, things that you can do. You know, for example, someone wrote into us today and said, what's with this new Obama tax law that's coming July this year and it's going to, you know, end the world. Society as we know it will no longer exist. And my answer to this person was, Have you created multiple streams of income? Do you have six months in savings? Because the only thing we can do at this point in this crumbling empire economy is to make sure that yourself and your household are taken care of. And that's what we try to do is provide actionable ideas, things that are practical that you can take um, and apply to your own life. And, of course, when we have geopolitical events breaking open the way they did with Iraq and ISIS and all the things that are going on, we have to turn our attention to those things because, as investors, we have to pay close attention to that if we're going to be wise. But when there's not total chaos going on somewhere in the world, which is going to be <laughs> maybe knocking on wood there, but we're going to try to get to uh, real you know, specific investing ideas, actionable advice, as Jennifer just pointed out, and... This concept of uh, some sort of global currency reset or this law that uh, is being uh, passed uh, underneath Obama uh, that many people have been worried about, you know, what I guess I guess it bounces off of me differently because I'm in the industry and what industry am I in? Well, I'm in the financial education industry. And so I'm pounded daily with these newsletters, pounded daily with all these different ideas. And, you know, I guess it's just part and parcel of what I do, but I see that kind of stuff all the time. And what these, you know, Stansberry, for example, is a great example of this. Uh, I'm not going to say anything bad about Stansberry. I've subscribed to some of their newsletters because I find that by studying my competitors, I'm able to learn and glean. But, you know, it seems as if there's always some sort of, you know, apocalyptic thing getting ready to happen next month. And then when it doesn't happen next month, oh, it's going to be the next month. And then, oh, it's going to be the next month. And I got to be honest with you. I tell you, Jennifer, I love the fact that we promote the five levels because I, I, after doing this this long, it makes me wonder sometimes how many people really secretly desire a collapse of the economy because they don't have any savings. They don't have any investments. So what do they care? Let it go up in flames, right? Let it go up in flames because then maybe they'll have a level playing field and they can finally get ahead for once. Right. Maybe their debt will be wiped out. Yeah, maybe maybe their debt will be wiped out. It doesn't matter if the 
currency collapses, everyone will be, like you said, on a level playing field. Because so. I, I do see a lot of people who are very, uh, very interested in those type of topics, but they don't have any savings and they're not interested at all in talking about saving money. Cause they, yeah, they don't have a plan at all. They don't all. have a plan. And listen, if you're one of those people out there listening to this and you, you know, and you've kind of fallen into that trap where you're always looking for the next apocalyptic thing to happen, you know, what Jennifer just said is very powerful. That was worth a lot of money, what you just said right there. Do you have any savings, right? Do you have multiple streams of income? Are you creating a plan? Do you have something in place? Because I can guarantee you this, when I go out and speak at places, I always, I, inevitably, people get upset because they want me to come out and swing at Obama and swing at Pelosi and swing at the, the Democrats. You know, because usually when I speak to audiences, I'm speaking to churches or places that are usually sympathetic to the Republican agenda. And, uh, and I have no time for politics. You know, I, I didn't make any money by paying attention to politics. I haven't, and politics has, has never uh, enriched, added one dollar to my pocket. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't help me uh, uh, raise my family. You know, poli- it's all a game. The politics is a game. It is a game. And so with it being a game, I'm not going to pay attention to what those bozos are doing unless, unless it specifically is going to hit um, the economy. And as you see, there's so much gridlock in Washington. I got to be honest. I love the fact there's gridlock in Washington. It's the best thing that could happen. I mean, the best thing that can happen is that a Republican or a Democrat president gets in and gets nothing done. Best thing that can happen. Best thing that can happen. You say, you got to be kidding me. Don't you want things to progress? You tell me one president who's going to progress this country, right? The progression they're talking about is very, very, very bad. So I don't want these presidents to have any power. I don't want them to ha- be able to do anything. I want them gridlocked. I want Washington to stop, to come to a grinding halt and be defanged. And I want them to stop raising so much money through taxes. I mean, they're they are cannibalizing this economy through their taxation. Now, do I want a president to go in and cut taxes and really begin to stimulate the economy? Sure. I'd love for that to happen. And I'd like to know who that's going to be. Okay. Cause I don't, I don't see anybody on the horizon who's going to do that because once these guys get into office, their only incentive becomes reelection. That's it. That's all they want is reelection. They just want to get back into the office and stay in the office and they'll do anything to do that. And right now you have 92 million people, 92, 594,000 people in America who are not in the labor force. And you know what they want? They want handouts. They want benefits. They want benefits. They want unemployment benefits to be extended, right? You're going to get no president in the, in Washington. Who's going to be able to overcome 92.5 million Americans who don't have a job. What are you going to do for them? Well, you better do something for them or you're not going to get into office. Our labor participation rates about a 36 year low. And so America's in a, in a very tough place. We wrote the book Bankruptcy of Our Nation, not because we thought we might be going bankrupt, not because we thought bankruptcy might be on the horizon for America or that it might be a novel concept, but in, in, instead because America is bankrupt. It's completely bankrupt. Uh, it has $120 trillion that it has to come up with, cough up. It has zero in savings. It's completely in debt. We just saw that the uh, foreign investors now have a record amount of our foreign debt. They're holding our public debt. And there's new numbers out this morning on in the inflation rate. And the inflation rate is showing, according to the Labor Department, released uh, latest inflation figures today, consumer prices last month posted their sharpest increase in 15 months. Over the past 12 months, the CPI um, has increased by about 2.1%. Of course, CPI excludes uh, energy and food categories. So you can't really, uh, you know, when you look at 2.1%, you can't really take that to be really meaning anything at all. Because unless if you don't eat and you don't drive, then I guess those numbers matter. But just in time for the big summer travel season, also gasoline in the U.S. is um, now reaching the highest level for this time of year since 2008, a six-year high. Gasoline in the U.S., Boosted by a surge in oil, now averaging about 368 per gallon at the pump. But I was going through some of these uh, numbers that were released by the 
uh, Labor Department and just astonishing numbers. I'm going to kind of read some of these things to you that I was reading here. I've got a USA Today report on this. I'll put it up on the post today. But it says uh, it's written by Paul Davidson. Consumer prices last month posted their sharpest increase in 15 months as inflation continued a recent acceleration from unusually low levels. It goes on and adds, the rise in prices was broad based with food, energy, housing, apparel, and other costs among those increasing. Food costs jumped 0.5%, the largest increase since August of 2011. Meat, chicken, fish, eggs all rose 1.4%, and fruit and vegetables rose 1.4%. By the way, the price index for meats, poultry, fish, and eggs now standing at an all-time high. Really something. Uh, the index for meats, poultry, fish, and eggs risen 7.7% over the last year, which is really, I mean, when you walk into the store, you see this. You see those prices. Have you noticed that, Jennifer? I mean, you do most of the shopping for us, and you go out and you see a lot of it. You're seeing it over and over again. I've seen it. Of course. when It astounds me when I hear... Janet Yellen, the Fed chief, come out and say, we're we're targeting higher inflation. We need higher inflation. Uh, when you go shopping at the grocery store, try to feed your family, you know uh, darn well that inflation is uh, out of control. It's soaring. I mean, uh, the shopping cart that used to cost $35 now cost me about $65. So that that's just my experience. I'm sure other people have their own experiences and have seen tremendous price increases. The price for fresh whole chickens hit an all-time high uh, in May. Uh, the price for fresh whole chickens was about 70 cents a pound back whenever the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics started tracking it back in January of 1980. Now the uh, price has uh, gone sky high, much higher than that. Um, speaking of Janet Yellen, you brought her up and I'm just sitting here thinking about her because as I mentioned before, 92 million people out of the workforce in America, labor participation rate at a 36 year low, you got teen unemployment, uh, topping 50% in some of the major U S cities. You have a very high teen unemployment rates in most cities flirting with 20 to 30%, which is very similar to what's happening in Europe. And tomorrow, uh, Janet Yellen, the Fed chairman, will be in the spotlight as uh, a two-day meeting will be wrapped up, the FOMC meeting, where Fed members are expected to pretty much keep everything the way that it has been. There's not too much uh, in the way of surprises expected by most economists. They expect her to keep interest rates right where they are now, practically near zero. They expect for the QE3 uh, to be gradually tapered again, another cut of about $10 billion, bringing the total down to $35 billion each month. And the main thing that people are going to be watching is when will these interest rates begin to rise? And not just that, but how quickly will they begin increasing them? Because they're going to have to begin raising these rates. And I tell you what, the United States has so much debt and when the fed starts to raise the interest rate don't forget that that interest rate that's going up also impacts government interest rates the rates that they have to pay on their debt to people who have who hold bonds so the u.s is going to be punished whenever these rates go up and there's no doubt that they don't want the rates to go up prematurely they don't want them to go up now if they could have their way they wouldn't want them to go up at all because they want to keep borrowing all of this cheap money and never have to really pay it back with a bunch of interest. But that's going to change because we cannot stay where we are today. In inflation uh, beginning to move higher, and that's how the media is portraying it. You and I both know that it's not beginning to move higher. It's been going higher. It's been going up. Inflation is not uh, when the merchant changes the price of milk from 3 to $4. Inflation occurs when the Fed hits the print button on the money machine. And as soon as that money is printed, it creates inflation. It's the allowance that these, these uh, 
stores, merchants, corporations, they are allowed to charge more because there is more money in the system. I, I like your golf ball example. Let me give that real quickly. Let's just assume that you and I, you the listener, are you and I have decided to go uh, golfing. And you have three golf balls in your pocket. I have three golf balls in my pocket. And we have our clubs and we hop on a boat to cross over to this beautiful golf course island, and it's going to be a really good time. Okay, you and I are going, and a big storm kicks up, and we end up getting stranded on some other island, and nobody knows we're there. Okay, so we're out there in the middle of nowhere. Our clubs get lost in the ship in the shipwreck. All we have left now are the clothes on our back, and we each have three golf balls in our pocket. That's it. So... In that new economy that we find ourselves in, we both have three golf balls, and we decide, okay, my strength is to create a shelter for us, and your strength is to go find some food, maybe some fish or, you know, coconuts, bananas, you know, go find something. And so we agree, and we go begin to do that. Well, I go and build a shelter, and you go and you find some food, and um, it turns out that you find a lot of food, and I want to buy some from you, and you say, well... You're going to have to give me something. And we decide to use the golf balls as money in this new economy. So you say, okay, you know, I'll, I'll take one golf ball for this whole banana tree that I found. Okay, you can have this whole banana tree. Just give me one golf ball for it. Okay, so I'm getting ready to hand you the golf ball, right? So everything clear so far? We're on the stranded island. Uh, we both have three golf balls. We're, make, we're using the golf balls as money. And I'm buying one of your food trees that you found with one of my golf balls. We got a settled price. I'm reaching into my pocket to grab the golf ball. Here it comes. I'm moving it towards you. And then suddenly in the sky, we hear a really loud noise. We look up and something's coming down right on top of us. We run out of the way and right in front of us, kaboom, right there in the middle of the sand slays this box. And it says on it, golf balls, one million count. Now, how much money, or how, and I should say, how many golf balls do you now want for your banana tree? You still want one? I don't think so. Now you've got half a million golf balls. So. Well, if we split them, if there's, a, if there's a box of a million and we split them in half and I take 500,000, you take 500,000, suddenly one golf ball for this whole tree that ain't going to work, is it? Right now, now think about this for a minute. Really think about this. Did the tree suddenly r- obtain more intrinsic value? Is it more valuable suddenly? Is it worth more now because of something that the tree itself did? No. No, right? There's no reason, that, there's no reason to pay more for it. The only difference is that there is more, quote-unquote, money in the system now And therefore, you have a permission slip to ask more. Now, let's say that before that box fell and I offered you one golf ball for the tree and you said, "Uh uh-uh, Jerry, I need five golf balls for that. Well, you and I both know that I don't have five golf balls. I've got three. I showed them to you, right? All I got is three. You can't charge five, right? You can't charge five because there's not five. I mean, unless you're going to give me some. Now, what if you charge me 10? You'd be out of your mind because there's no, there's not enough golf balls on the island to pay for that. No one would pay 10 golf balls, A, because they don't have them, and B, that'd be the stupidest transaction ever. There's only six on the island. So whenever this crate of golf balls lands on the island, it creates this automatic inflation. You see, that is inflation. Inflation is not when the merchant... X is out the price and hikes it by 20% because he wants to. That's not inflation. That's the effect. The cause is when the Fed prints money and like that box of golf balls falling onto the island, they are injecting money into the system and therefore it allows you and I to pay more things. The merchant can then say, I want $4 for that gallon of milk instead of three. And nobody says, well, we can't do that. Well, of course they can because there's millions and millions and millions of more dollars in the system and it allows us to do this. So that is exactly what inflation, thank you for bringing that up. That's a really good illustration, I think, for helping people understand inflation. 
Yeah, like, for example, if there were only a million dollars in the system, you couldn't have a $20 million home for sale Ever. in the market. But now there are these crazy homes going for, you know, hundreds of million dollars. And But you can have that because there are trillions of dollars exactly. in the system. Yeah, so is that house worth $100 million? It's worth $100 million, I guess, in this system, right? Because there's this much money. But if you, if you begin to contract that money supply, you cannot have these higher priced assets because they can't be justified. They're all relative based upon the amount of money that's in the system. Their price is relative. And so I think that's one of the major takeaways here is that when you see this inflation that's rising and you say, well, you know, the grocery stores are charging me more, the chicken's going up and the, you know, these butchers are really making a bunch of money. Listen, that's just, that's exactly what the Fed wants you to think. That's exactly how they have played it all throughout history. These central bankers back to the last several hundred years since they started back in the Bank of England, they always point their finger at the merchant. They never take the blame, right? They'll always say, look at these greedy merchants always trying to get more. And they start bringing in price controls after they have created all this inflation. So, in essence, uh, this is a big disaster that's waiting to happen. It is a disaster in slow motion. It's a train wreck that's happening as we speak. And you look around and you see the price of stocks rising. You see the price of gas rising. You see the price of meat rising. You see the price of eggs rising. You see the price of uh, food rising. And then you have people who get on TV and say, Where's the inflation? I don't see the... Come on, man. You know, you just got to go back to school. You know, you got to go back to school. Or don't go to school because they won't teach you that. School won't teach you what inflation is. They'll tell you the Fed line. They'll tell you, well, it's whenever greedy merchants want more money and they raise prices. But that's not inflation. Inflation occurs when the money itself is created. Have we had money created in this system over the last several years? Yes and amen. So... Therefore, is there inflation in the system? Yes, there is plenty of inflation. Now, what some people are pointing at is they're saying, well, in times of rampant inflation, prices go up really quick, really fast. Now, you're talking about hyperinflation when you say that. And we believe that hyperinflation is going to eventually take hold. And this Fed is not going to be able to rein it in. They won't be able to raise rates fast enough to stop the hyperinflation. And also remember that all of this money that has been created by the Fed, a lot of it has uh, foreign holders. So there's still a lot of foreign demand for this dollar, A, because some people, some countries still consider it to be the safest currency. B, uh, many other countries out there need it. Most countries need the dollar for international trade, so they have to buy them and hold them. So that's why we continually point at the global demand for dollars. Uh, stop pointing at Obama and thinking he's going he's gonna to create hyperinflation. Look, he it, the only way he could create hyperinflation is if he were to do something to hack off the rest of the world and have them stop using dollars. That's not going to happen without short of something major, major, major happening. So again, stop, you know, we need to stop you know, pointing at people and thinking they're going to create the hyperinflation. The hyperinflation is going to happen whenever foreign countries no longer want to hold the dollar. That's it, man. That's how it works. And so once that happens, you're going to see massive hyperinflation. And then you're going to see the Fed try to raise rates and they're going to raise rates until they collapse the system because they won't be able to raise them quick enough. So we'll have a period of hyperinflation followed by a period of deflation. Deflation being the worst possible case scenario. I mean, hyperinflation's bad. You know, it's really bad. But deflation, buddy, that's the worst. I mean, that really is the worst. Well, and that goes against our ingrained version of this American dream where everything just has to perpetually go up in value. That's what our lives are built on in this country. And so not only is deflation catastrophic you know, economically uh, for a nation, but f as far as our mindsets go, I mean, what are Americans used to for the last several decades? 
We buy a house and the price goes up. We buy a stock and the price goes up. We get a job and our income goes up. We get, you know, everything goes up. And the, and again, the, this is the concept or the idea, and I've said this before, uh, it's this concept of the present being the minimum, right? This idea within Americans and within the American culture that if we're not going up, if things aren't going up in price, then it's not good, right? That's what the Fed says. Oh, we got to keep the stock market going up. We got to keep housing prices going up. Who says they have to go up? Yeah, so there is this, there's this concept here of the present being the minimum and people, uh, just, they don't want to see things go down. The Fed doesn't want things to go down. And it's, again, it's because we live in a debt based monetary system. We have to see rising prices. That's the only way for this system to work. It's a broken system. It's a bad system. It is a system that is unsustainable. It's a system that's going to break down. It's, going to, it's a system that's going to lead to deflation. And when deflation hits, we're going to see prices go down, and, uh, and we're going to see things go down, and incomes go down, and we're going to see asset prices go down. And that's how the empire ends. I mean, that's how it works. Until you can find some more schmucks who want to hold your currency, and then you, got to, then you can start the whole process again. But the U.S. won't be able to do that. I mean, it's very unlikely. There'll be another country that rises up and takes their place, just like we took the place of Britain, and Britain took the place of the people before them, and the people before them. It just goes on and on and on and on. So inflation in the news today, and now you know. Now you know how to explain inflation. Next time somebody asks you where the inflation is, explain to them the golf ball illustration. Have them think about that. And when they think about that, they'll fully understand that inflation is not coming. It's already here. Jennifer, where are the markets at? We're almost out of time here. Well, the S&P 500 today, I reacted maybe positively to the inflation news. I don't, I don't know exactly what it was, but it's uh, up about a quarter of a percent right now. It's at 1941 on the S&P 500. Gold is down just a bit to 1270. Silver about flat at $19.72. We remain strongly bullish on gold and silver. Our Trigger Trade Pro system is showing a very near, uh, ver getting very close to a major, major buy signal on both gold and silver, uh, but especially gold. And uh, you can learn more about uh, how to find out about all that kind of stuff by becoming a subscriber, uh, ftmdaily.com forward slash subscribe. You can learn all about that there. Also, if you do not own precious metals, you want to probably be doing that before we finally see this thing hit the fan. If you don't have any physical precious metals at all and you want to find out more about that, our precious metals advisor's name is Tom Cloud. You can reach him at 800 247 2812. That is 800 247 2812. He can answer all of your questions about physical metal. And those of you who are holding numismatic coins, maybe some of those ones that you saw on Goldline or maybe they were being pushed on Fox News, a lot of those uh, are extremely expensive and they, they carry heavy commissions. And Tom Cloud has actually helped a lot of people get out of those coins and back into just bullion coins, which are much, much, much cheaper. So if you just want an analysis of your gold and silver portfolio, give Tom a call. Tell him you heard about him on Follow the Money daily radio yeah by the way he can also help you hold the physical gold and silver medals in your ira and that, he specializes in that as well yeah people don't know they can do that i mean you can self-direct an ira and you can put anything in it real estate your own business you can put you know uh, uh and of course you can put gold and silver in it there's just a few things you can't do like life insurance there's a few no-no uh investments that you can't put into an ira but for the most part uh, gold and silver are no big deal at all. So if you want to have some gold and silver in your IRA and get tax benefits on that gold and silver, that's really a good idea. So yeah, just give Tom a call, 800-247-2812. Well, Jennifer, that was a great show. We are, I can't believe we're already at the end. We're out of time. Yeah, it's been a great show. And uh, remember, if you want to learn more, I, we didn't mention this earlier, but Jerry just said the five levels. If you want to learn more about our five levels of financial freedom, just go to ftmdaily.com forward slash five levels for any of you who are wondering what he meant by five levels. Yeah, our five levels of financial freedom. You can learn more about that on our website. Uh, it's completely free. You can go there and just read and read and read and learn and learn and learn. 
All right, friends. Well, that brings us to the end of this show, this episode. We thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, I leave you with this final word, this time from the book of First Timothy chapter 6, verse 7, where it says, For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. Just something to think about. Remember, friends, when you want the truth about the global economy, just follow the money. See, We'll see you right back here tomorrow. God bless. All of the information contained on Follow the Money is strictly for informational and educational purposes. The views and opinions of our guests and sponsors, including Tom Cloud and Jay Peroni, are their own and do not necessarily represent the views of FTMDaily.com or Robinson Media Group, LLC. Jerry and Jennifer Robinson do hold their insurance licenses and may offer consulting on life insurance and fixed retirement income products. Jennifer Robinson is an investment advisor representative with Faith Based Investor LLC. Remember, never do your financial planning through podcast or radio. It's your money. Be wise. Do your due diligence and always consult a trusted financial professional before making any financial decisions.